In this video, I am going to show you a thing or two about using the Hole tool in Autodesk Inventor 2018. Uh, the Hole tool is a is really the best way to go about making holes in your part. Uh, a lot of people will sketch a circle and extrude it through an object as a cut, um, but that has some limitations as we'll see in the drawings. So using the Hole tool really has a lot more versatility. There's a lot more that you can do with this. So when I select the Hole tool, it's going to automatically select any center points that I have in uh, 2D sketch mode on my drawing. And for this first one, I only want the first center point, so I'm going to deselect all the rest. <clears throat> the whole tool has lots of different options and buttons that you can use. Uh, the one that is coming in by default is just a drilled hole. And I have the hole set to go through all, so it's going to go through everything, and I can set my diameter by changing this number here. So when I click OK, it keeps that hole, and I have a drawing set up here so I can see these as I, as I make them. When you use the hole and thread tool to dimension these, you get a lot more information about the hole than if you just use your basic dimension tool. So for instance, in this case, I can see the diameter of the hole as well as the fact that it's a through hole. It cuts all the way through the part, and um, it doesn't terminate part way along. So if I turn my sketch back on and go back to my hole tool. This time again I'm going to deselect all these centers that I don't want. In this case I can change my termination from going through all to a set distance. In this case I can make a specific depth here and you can model this either as like a pointed end of a drill bit or if you're modeling something that's going to be drilled with an end mill or a flat bottom drill bit you can change it to over to that. Uh, I'm going to keep mine pointed you can change the diameter or you can change the depth. And when I click OK to keep this, my new hole in the drawing, when I put the hole note on it, is going to display not only the diameter, but also the depth as well. And here I can see that this one's not cutting all the way through. That little depth symbol tells me how deep it's going. Next up, <clears throat> I'm going to change from the straight drilled hole here to a counter bore. When we click on counter bore, we get this larger hole at the top of the smaller hole. I'm going to change back to going through all of this. I can change the diameter of the counter bore or I can change the depth of the counter bore. We'd put something like this in there when we want to uh, sink a fastener beneath the surface of the material. So if we have a bolt head or something like that and we want it to sit down below the surface, we would uh, put a counter bore in there that's large enough to fit the, uh, the washer and maybe a socket wrench or something that fits over that bolt to tighten it. So I like this. I'm going to click Apply to keep it. And over here in my drawing, when I put my hole note on this, I will see on the first line the information about the hole. It's a quarter inch diameter hole cutting all the way through the part. And the second line shows me this counter bore symbol with a diameter of one half inch and a depth of one quarter inch. So the second line pertains only to the counter bore. Now I will have a look at the option to counter sink, which means to put this angled top in the hole, which is designed to fit a tapered screw head. So I can set a diameter for this as well and an angle. That angle, 82 degrees, is pretty standard, so I'm going to leave that alone. Again, I'm going to go through the entire part, and when I do this, I get a new hole in my drawing with my hole and thread note. I can see that I have a diameter of one quarter of an inch going all the way through the part, and on the second line, this symbol tells me that I've got a countersink with a half inch diameter and an 82 degree angle. My other option that's on here is to create a spot face, which is a lot like a counter bore, except that where a counter bore is more for uh, recessing a bolt or screw head into the material, a spot face is more intended for uh, just creating a good flat solid surface. So this would be used either in a situation where the material is rough and so uh, the fastener doesn't have a flat spot to sit or maybe where it's slightly curved and the fastener needs a flat spot to sit. 
It's not a uh, very deep recess at all. This is a 16th of an inch. It's just large enough to fit the head of the fastener or washer that you're putting on it. So uh, when I keep this and I go back to my drawing, my whole note is going to look like a counterbore except that it has SF to indicate a spot face. And finally, I'll show you how we can use the hole tool to add threads to a hole. So if we want to have a tapped hole, a threaded hole, then we switch from uh, this straight hole option over to a tapped hole and we get a whole new menu of options here. Uh, let me get that spot face off of there. So there's all kinds of thread types that you can choose from this. You can choose um, ANSI standards, you can choose metric uh, or just about any other standard that exists. You can choose the size or diameter of your hole and based on that, you'll be given a handful of different options for thread patterns. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple with my quarter inch hole and a quarter 20 thread pattern. Um, you can switch back and forth between right and left handed threads. Uh, almost always going to be using that right handed option. And if you don't want the hole to the threads to go the full depth of the hole, you can uncheck that box and you can specify a depth for the threads that can be less than the depth of the hole. I'm going to keep that on full depth. And when I uh, go back to my drawing and I apply a whole note to this, I get the thread pattern for this hole. So a quarter of an inch, 20 threads per inch, uh, unified national threads with a coarse designation and a, a tolerance of 2B, the B being uh, an internal thread versus A, which would be an external thread. So lots of different things that you can do with the whole tool. You don't get these, all this information in the drawings when you just extrude a circle as a cut. So it's a good idea to use that whole tool so that you can really get all the necessary information about that hole, even if the hole is kind of complicated. Thanks for watching. Good luck.